guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Frank. Um, today we're going to be doing a uh, build update video. This might be a little bit more of a unstructured video than I usually put out. Um, I just have a lot to talk about. Not a lot of time. In the last uh, 48, 72 hours have been absolutely insane. Thank you Reddit. So if you're new to the page, new to the Instagram, YouTube, whatever, um, thank you so much. The, the reception has been more than I could have uh, imagined. Um, I just trying to build this thing so thank you to everybody um, for your support so I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and we'll start going around I'll start showing you updates on what I did to the suit I get a, uh, a buttload of LEDs in so that's great I started wiring up a lot of stuff on the suit um, just for funsies just see how it looks as you can see it's standing by itself um, it's primed there's a lot of little other things kind of going on the project's in shambles, but like in a good way. There's just a lot of little moving pieces. As paint's drying, I'm doing one thing over here, adjusting things, so uh, it'll be, like I said, the most um, unstructured update video, but bear with me, so um, let's take a look. So let's talk about this thing. Uh, as you can see, I got LEDs in. Um, I got them all wired up. They're not actually really in there too well. I got them this morning, and I really, really wanted to just see what the suit would look like with them on. And I love them. Um, the only ones I'm going to probably substitute out is uh, are these ones up here on the neck. Um, they're like a cooler white, um, almost a blue. Uh, all the others obviously look much whiter and brighter. If I cover up the main arc reactor, it'll kind of dampen things down a little bit. But there you go. You can see they're kind of blue. Everything you see, except for the eyes and these two little LEDs here, are these cool little um, uh, Cobb LEDs, SMDs. They're just these very tiny boards. I ordered... A lot of them. I actually ended up getting way more than I needed because apparently I can't read ads on eBay, but they're super cheap. I got uh, one, one, two, three, a lot for very cheap. And this way now, if any of them burn out, I can kind of swap them out. So I actually added a little bit of extra LEDs around the suit that maybe would be portrayed in the movie because I just, I don't know, I think it adds a little bit to the effect. The suit's going to have the Infinity Stones. Theoretically, it should be a little bit stronger than it normally would be. So I have the one sitting back here in the helmet, have the eyes, the two that were in the neck. Um, I added those. You got the ones that are kind of here on the shoulder, obviously the arc reactor, and I kind of had a, uh, a little bit of a plate put back here to kind of show some detail, which just I think looks beautiful. These ones don't really exist, but I think just having them on the abs look pretty cool. These ones are there, and there's some renditions have um, stones down here in the, the waist, or... Um, not stones, lights down here in the uh, the hips and waist. I don't know if I'm going to add that. We'll see. And then obviously, you know, the ones on the the, uh, the Infinity Stones on the hand. I can't even explain how happy seeing this thing stand up and lit makes me. Um, it just it, it's been a it's been a crazy little week, and um, seeing this just it, it, it's making it all come together, and I'm absolutely ecstatic about it. So let's move on to some other things. Like, why do I have so many helmets? If you've been following me on Instagram or Reddit, you'll see that I probably printed uh, more helmets than makes sense. So right now I have a couple different helmet sizes because I'm just trying to get them to fit my head the best way possible. The one that's actually on the suit right now, this is a 100% printed helmet, 100% um, scale size from Thingiverse. It's the version one helmet. This red one right here is the version two. Uh, there's just subtle differences, taper um, appearance, um, the way it's constructed, minute details. Uh, that doesn't have those little LED spots in the back. It's just built differently. This one I printed at 100% size and it is absolutely gigantic on my head. So when I went to go print this one, I printed this at 100% and it fits great. It looks good. It's just a, still a little bit too big for the suit. So what I did is I did a lot of measurements and I landed on 94%. So this one's just a little bit smaller and it looks great still and this is what I actually have the servo motors in if you saw in the last update video. It fits my head good but too good. It's tight, uh, it's kind of uncomfortable. So I did some measurements again and I opted to print a 96% helmet. It's a little hard to see. There you go. Um, I haven't actually even taken it off of the raft yet. I uh, taped the jaw on just to kind of see if it fit and this fits perfectly. There's room for my ears, there's room for um, a little bit of electronics and servos. So this is gonna be the final rendition of the helmet and I'll probably just sell the other two. So this one's perfect and I'm actually gonna do a video on PLA bonding and how I'm fusing all this together. And then I haven't even popped this one off the bed yet. This is the face plate for the, the, the helmet that will go with the suit. Uh, again, I'm gonna show how, to smooth, how I smooth PLA so quickly because that seems to be a, a big question I get asked. Oh my God, how you're sanding for so long, why you, you know, it must be ridiculous. 
and I'm not. I'm spending the least time amount sanding because palm sanders are the future. And also my prints are actually coming out pretty smooth, so that helps a lot with the uh, post work. My printer started stringing kind of bad because I've left this filament out for a little bit too long, but I, that's all easily fixed in post-processing. So that's why I have so many helmets. This is going to be the final one. Uh, if you've noticed the dunce cap, this yellow printer has been giving me nothing but problems that I'm just fighting. And uh, when he prints great, it, it's beautiful. Uh, as you can see, that mask came out great. But man, thermal runaways, uh, fil just, I don't want to talk about that. You know what? Moving on. Arc reactor chest piece. So as I talked about in the last video, I started making re a resin cast mold for this little chest piece that was, you know, uh, sliced out of the program. So took this out. Simple, easy, made a mold out of it, like that, popped the mold out, poured resin in, and got a, uh, a negative out. Well, the first one didn't come out so well. It came out really kind of chunky. Um, a lot of the big top part got cut off, so I had to redo it. Ditch that one, and now I have this one. As you can see, it is perfect. It is crystal clear. Um, I did a lot of sanding, so it didn't come out this clear initially. I had to use uh, some polishing techniques. If you've ever cleaned the headlights on a car, um, like a headlight restoration kit, it's a lot of wet sanding. You start with a high grit, 40, uh, you know, 40, 100, 400, 300, whatever. You, go, you move up in the grits, and eventually you get to 1,000 grit, 2,000 grit, and you start wet sanding. And then you polish and buff, and it ends up giving you a, I, I mean, a perfect finish. If I hold this to the lens, you can barely even tell that it's there. That's how clear I got it. And it's just a resin mold. So this is going to give some depth to the chest piece. If I take that off, you can see the little piece of the arc reactor, uh, the detail that I was put in there. So it's just taped in there. It's not centered too well, but uh, it will be, you know, I'll fix that. And then I'm, I still have to add a diffuser to hide the yellow uh, cob LED. So it's not just yellow when it's off. That would kind of look a little ugly. So it'll give a nice range of depth and some much more detail to the whole suit. So I'm really excited how this whole thing came out. If you've seen on Instagram, you've seen that I've actually finished most of the glove, uh, except for paint. I got the stones made and they came out beautiful. I could not have asked these colors to just, I could have never hoped for them to come out this nice. Um, they look, I think, almost just like they do in the movie. Um, I made these the same way I made the arc reactor. I made molds for them. Um, Mind stone, time stone, and the other four kind of look the same. Popped out the 3D printed part, poured resin in there. But before I poured the resin in, I was able to find on Amazon these uh, really weird Chinese colored uh, resin dyes. And after some trial and error, I found, nailed down all four col or all six colors and mixed it with the resin, poured them in, and the stones came out perfect. These this this is actually the leftover resin right here in the cups I mixed. As you can see, I have a, a lot left over. I mixed way too much. But then when you throw a light behind it, they glow beautifully. So if you want to see what the stones look like, go check out my Instagram. That's the stones, um, the LEDs I'm using for them. Uh, I don't have it in the glove right now since I'm actually in the process of priming everything. I had to take the LEDs out and then uh, I got a, this was a kind of a mock-up for the uh, the Instagram picture. But these are, they're these super tiny pre-wired 12-volt SMDs off of uh, Osnium.com. I've been using them for years on cars and I knew instantly once I saw the glove, I knew how I was going to power them um, and what I was going to use to make them glow and shine. Uh, they're like 2 or $3 each, and they have just been absolute workhorses this whole time, and I, I couldn't imagine using anything else. I, I was able to get an amber, a purple, a blue, a red, um, and a pink for this one, and then I just used a white one for the Mind Stone, and they just, they're perfect. Um, so go check out Osnium if you're looking for really, really, really tiny, small SMDs. They're just, like I said, they're pre-wired, plug and play, 12 volt, and they're great. All right, so now that we talked about all like the complicated bits and all just the little um, changes to the whole project or updates, um, a lot of people have asked me, how is it to wear? What's it like putting it on? Um, how is it all held together? Is this strapped to that? So I just want to kind of go over the little bits now that it's hanging here and be better built. And now, especially that the legs are done on how this is all worn and why it really doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything when it's on. The back is a backpack. I have straps that come around the front of my body and then clip in the front here and it wears just like a backpack. And then the chest has a buckle here and here. It hangs down, the whole chest plate hangs over my shoulders. And then there's a buckle here and here that has the, the, the top part of the abs hanging and supports that as well as the sides have straps that go around my back. And then again, that's that's uh, mimicked on the second part of the abs right here. 
they hang down with, with buckles and then they come around my waist and then the uh th like the crotch butt plate underwear looking thing that just actually goes on just like that there's a buckle here and a buckle here this way i can take that off a lot easier because god forbid i'm at a comic con or something and i really need to use the bathroom i can at least get access to the easy part and uh, it'd be really funny to walk into a urinal and watch and see a dude in an Iron Man costume standing there uh, going to the bathroom. But it's a real possibility. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the legs that are still being sanded and touched up, um, I'm still filling in the little, the little seams and creases. But that's just, you know, palm sander stuff that I just need to get back to. Um, these are held up by suspenders right here and you can see them go through they go all the way up to my shoulders and cross just like suspenders so my uh my my shoulders are actually holding up the weight and pulling these up as high as possible and then the same way that the hands hold up the forearms the forearms aren't actually attached to the biceps um the the hands actually kind of help support everything so it's a lot more free to move and move around my arm the um shins are held up the exact same way so this just kind of came apart. I haven't actually put any buckles or straps there yet, but basically there's the shoe cover and then this uh, shin just sits around the shoe cover and the whole the whole boot and shoe. And it kind of helped, this just sits there. And then these actually move independently from each other. I am going to add um, just some light straps to keep them more centered and uh, not move around as much. And then I'm gonna make something that the knee kind of moves back and forth as I bend my leg. Uh, if these were kind of connected, it might get a little more complicated when walking, but right now as it sits, I can walk just fine um, in it and it, it's not too bad. And then um, another question people asked was how the shoulders are held up. And it's literally just one buckle. It's one strapped buckle that hangs right off the side of the shoulder. And then it just sits right there perfectly. Uh, I had to play around with the, the angle um, on how far it came forward and back. And it fits it's supposed to fit right in there and it does it lets me move the bicep up and since the bicep isn't actually attached to anything as i bend my arm like i said everything's free to move i don't want things too connected or else things would start getting kind of complicated so that's the suit it takes me about uh 20 minutes to put on i'm sure once it's painted um and there's leds and wires obviously that time is going to increase but I can put it on by myself and I can take it off completely by myself. And that was a very, very important goal for me because I, if I go to a con by myself, I don't want to have to rely on somebody to come with me just to dress me. So um, a lot of this has been done with the idea of being able to do it myself. Um, I can even slip in and out of the hands by myself. It's just going to be making a good wire connection system that I don't have to fumble around with too much. Another real quick thing I wanted to address was cost. That seems to be a, um, a big question, a big topic was cost and how long has this all taken? So. This is everything you need aside from a computer. As stated before, I bought my first printer brand new for like, it was like four, 450, I think, the Creality CR10S. I got the used one for about 200 because somebody else is having problems with it. I fixed it, repaired it, cost me about 10 bucks to repair it. And now they print exactly the same, except when that one's not being an asshole. As for the suit itself, how much money I have to put into that? Because this, you can make your money back 3D printing. That's fine. Um, I look at this as an investment. How much have I spent on the suit though? Right there. That's 13 rolls of Sunlu PLA plus 3D printing filament. So I've used the 13 rolls there, burned them completely, and then I have two rolls still up there. And I still have a good amount left on that roll, and I'm getting pretty low on that one. And I was able to print the, those two new helmet, that new helmet, the helmet, the white helmet that was on the suit, the black helmet that was too small, the version one helmet that's painted, or version two, and with just that 15. I also went through um, a lot of rafts and supports. Now, while this looks like a lot of material, it's not. This stuff is thin, it's it's completely hollow. If you know what a raft or a tree support is, you'll know that uh, this doesn't actually use a lot of filament. So this is nice and light, you can actually squish it and crush it. So these are all rafts. I'm saving them because I've been using a lot of the parts for uh, touching places up and you know just making stuff. So that's all just waste. As for failed prints, this is everything that has failed for the entire suit so far. I had a mask fail, that's fine, cool. The This right here is the, these are the backs of the hands, um, which I don't actually need, because uh, they're covered with the toppers. So they weren't really failed prints, I just don't need them anymore. This was a trial and error with a hand. Oh, hi, hi Belle, this is my buddy's dog, so uh, she's making a guest appearance. Um, this is a, uh, a failed hand part. This is, I have no idea what this part was. Maybe a kneecap, yeah, failed kneecap. This was a, elbow that was way too small this was a failed helmet part i gotta get there sweetie 
Okay. All right. She's just, she's in the video now. A finger, because I went through some sizing with different fingers and, you know, possibilities. I had a bicep completely fail. It just got knocked off the bed. That's fine. This was part of an oversized ab, like the upper part that just failed. And then these were the abs that I initially printed at 85% because my math sucks and I measured things way too wrong. That was supposed to be that entire part right there it just it was not big enough so uh, these were kind of the biggest waste of a part everything else had a reason for failing or just i had to move on so i haven't really burned a lot of material at all with this entire project that's 13 rolls 15 total they're about 15 bucks each uh, it's been like 230 250 dollars the suit and everything that i wear so far weighs about 22 pounds 11 kilograms maybe 12 11 to 12 rolls actually made it into the suit Whereas th two to three to four rolls have been spent on waste. So that's not too bad considering, um, especially with the learning curve I had to go through and just what I have to show for it. So guys, that's it for this update. Um, I know it was a lot. I threw a lot at you probably without explaining in detail too much um, of the little things. So if you have any questions, concerns, you want to know more specifically on a certain area, um, message me, leave a comment, um, check me out on Instagram, follow that, Reddit, whatever. I'm, I'm an open book on how I did any of this. Uh, it's my first cosplay build. It's my first anything this size. As some of you guys pointed out, um, yes, I build Gundam models, but this is, this is next level uh, uh, complicated. So if you, have, if you want to know anything, just ask, please. Uh, I've been absolutely loving the community, um, the 3D printing community, the Marvel community. Uh, it, it's just been, they've been so receptive and I, I, I couldn't ask for anything better. So, uh, yep, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next update video. Um, I'm also going to be dropping a couple other videos on 3D printing processes, like I said. So uh, keep an eye out for that and uh, tell your friends. This has been absolutely great and have a good day.